Next thing in version 20 we want to take a look at uh, is what we call component grouping. So what I'm going to do is in place activate into the case assembly stage by just clicking edit. Move this over a little bit so we can see our components. And so what we want to do is build a, a group of components. So for instance you can see that um, we have many uh, parts kind of at the top level assembly. You can see that there's a list of bolts here. And you can imagine that these bolts can be scattered throughout this uh, assembly tree. And what we can do is actually group these together under a single node. By clicking the group, you can see that it automatically creates a default assembly group. Of course, we can rename that group, in this case, the um, quarter-inch bolts group. And so what that's going to allow us to do is actually select a single selector and in this case maybe I want to hide those bolts and you can see that they'll disappear from our assembly um, because again they're all in one uh, location. Now don't get confused these are not sub-assemblies uh, simply a collector of parts or sub-assemblies uh, for easy selection. So for instance I want to, may want to take these last four bolts and group those together And then you can see I have uh, other components that make up this uh, gripper. As I select each one of these, you can see them highlight on the screen. And I want all those to be under a single collector as well, including the bolts that I just uh, grouped. I'm going to select all of those components again and group those. So you can see that I have a group uh, inside of a group in this case. I'm going to rename this something more meaningful. Call this the gripper group. And finally, what I may want to do is group together uh, this pneumatic slide at the top, which is not in a subassembly, but rather two subassemblies. So I'm going to group that together. And again, I'll give it a unique name. Gripper slide group. And now this gripper, I may want to be part of that gripper slide group. So by simply dragging and dropping, I can put it inside of the gripper slide group. And now it's asking me how I want to place this in the assembly pathfinder. And in this case, I want it to show up at the bottom of the target group, the group that I'm dropping it onto. And now as I expand those, you can see that I have groups inside of groups inside of groups. So it's a great way to simplify our uh, assembly pathfinder and make it more meaningful. It's also a great way to uh, select a single collector for input for other commands. So for machine and factory layout, we have this new move multiple parts command. And when I select that, you can see that it gives me an option to maintain relationships internal to my select set. We also have relations, uh, options to delete relationships internal to select set, uh, delete them and ground the parts. In this case, we want to maintain our relationships internal to the select set. And so as input for the move multiple parts, I'm going to select my group. And you can see it adds all those components to the command uh, in one click. So with the move multiple parts, I have several different options on how I wish to move these parts. You can see that I, I can move them linearly. I can also rotate them. You also have the option for copy, which is what I want to do in this case is copy. Uh, so once I've selected that, the next option is how do I wish to move these components? You can move them in X, Y, and Z. Uh, you can move them point to point, which is what I want to do in this case, is moving point to point. And what I want to move is from center to center. I want to pick up the centers of these holes. Now you can see it's not selecting anything, and that's because the part is inactive. So we'll go ahead and activate that at this point. And I just want to pick up the center of the far hole and move it to the center of this hole. And again, I'm using the copy option, so it's actually going to copy that group of uh, uh, slide components to the secondary location. And you can see that Solid Edge automatically puts the uh, copied components in its own group. Expand that you can see it contains the same parts as the grip or slide group.
remember that I uh, selected the option to maintain relationships internal to the select set. So if I go back to the move part command and I select this slide component, you can see as I drag it up and down that all the parts remain relative to each other because it is maintaining those relationships. So I think it's easy to imagine how this component grouping and multiple move part in Solid Edge version 20 is going to simplify and facilitate machine and factory layout. That's going to provide us with an efficient means to lay out factory floors with machinery and connecting systems like conveyors and trunk work, uh, which is replicated throughout our design. So another new option to boost performance while working on large assemblies is the option to inactivate or remove from memory any hidden or unused components after a set amount of time. This is going to free up memory uh, for us as we're working on a large assembly. You can see the new option to inactivate hidden and unused components every 120 minutes and we can change that increment to uh, whatever amount of time uh, we wished for it to uh, unload those components. And so all of these are going to uh, facilitate uh, working with very large assemblies.